I'm not one to complain that Hollywood's not original. I mean, ripping off stuff's been going back hundreds and thousands of years. I mean, how much of William Shakespeare's stuff was straight ripped off from myths of the time? It happens. Whatever. So that, with that in mind, let's talk about something that Hollywood dragged out of the cemetery with the new Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Much like the Halloween franchise, they're getting back to the basics and really targeting your nostalgia. But instead of taking the same name of the movie they're continuing, like Halloween, this time they're dropping the THE in the title. In this movie, we're given a quick refresher of the terrible events of the first movie, and we meet a group of young influencers looking to buy up and gentrify the abandoned town of Harlow where Leatherface did his thing. While they're touring the abandoned town, they come across an orphanage with a sweet older lady running it. After some unpleasantness, the woman has a heart attack. Her son, two officers, and a member of the group go off to get her help. The older woman dies on the way, and I'm guessing you know who the son is, and I think you know where it goes from here. For as terrible as some reviews were, and my friend Nicole hated it, I liked it. I didn't care for the original. I know. I'm sorry. I don't hold in the same esteem that I do Halloween. I think that's why I didn't care that this baddie didn't feel like Leatherface. For one, in the original, Leatherface was just as scared of the kids as they were of him. He was attacking them because he thought they were attacking him. In this one, he's just pissed off that his mom died. Like, if you replaced Leatherface and put in a generic villain with a chainsaw, you wouldn't lose anything. This movie is a paint-by-the-numbers cash grab, kind of like a different horror franchise relaunch, except with less delusion from the filmmakers. I think one of the reasons it got such bad reviews is the movie clearly takes aim at a certain group of people that don't have a sense of humor about themselves. It's clear this movie revels in its gore while cutting up young, good-looking people who are more obsessed with likes than anything else. The biggest shot across the bow and my absolute favorite scene is wonderful in its ridiculousness. The group of influencers are all huddled on a bus, not exactly sure what's going on. Suddenly, Leatherface waltzes on board, covered in blood, armed with a chainsaw, and all of them pull out their phone and go live. One person in the bus actually says this line, Try anything and you're canceled, bro. It's so stupid and ridiculous that I love it. I even enjoyed the main group of characters, and one was made to stand out in a way I really didn't see coming. Lila was the survival of a school shooting and has a real bad case of survivor's guilt. It still haunts her and it's been the defining moment of her life. I also like the contrast to the more liberal-minded group and the stereotypical Texan Richter who worked for him. I actually enjoy their interactions because it helps you understand the influencers a bit more, and it doesn't seem like the director is using one to talk down about a particular side. They disagree, but each states their case plainly. I do wish we would have seen more of Lila and Richter because I like their little friendship. Some other things I liked, Leatherface is handy and creative with his chainsaw. He used it for offense, of course, but he also has some moves that showed you need a little more than distance just to escape him. Sure, this movie has some head-scratching moments that the writers put in there just so they can get from point A to point B, but for the most part, I was really entertained by it. I watched the original just a few years ago, so it doesn't hold a special place in my heart, so changes to the formula don't bother me that much, especially considering how different the Texas Chainsaw Massacre is compared to part two. One last good thing about the movie, it's just a shade over 80 minutes long so it doesn't drag. In fact, it gets to the action quite early and once it gets there, the movie doesn't let up. I mean, I liked it a lot. It's not a good movie by any stretch of the imagination, but it was very entertaining. I enjoyed pretty much every moment except for the ending. Look, I get that it's a horror movie, but it was so telegraphed and so cliche that I rolled my eyes. I get people want to milk this franchise for as much money as I can get, but surely there's a better way than what they went with. It just puts a bad taste in your mouth for such a fun 80 minutes. I toyed with giving it an 8 or an 8.5, but that ending was so stupid. Six and a half Dr. Chainsaws.